Hello and welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piskor. We're going to look at Thor Ryan of the New Gods by Keith Giffen and John Romita Jr. But first I want to invite everybody to like, follow, and subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. Hit that notification icon bell button next to the subscribe button and you will be notified whenever we post a new video. It'll give you a leg up on the kayfabe effect. If you're somebody that sees a good looking comic and tries to chase down a copy, you'll be the first ones to know whenever we have a new video and uh, hopefully get get to the front of looking for that that obscure gem that we've uncovered. And um, let the videos play through till the end because that'll help YouTube share our videos with other comic fans, which is how we grow this this uh, cartoonist kayfabe channel, and uh, thank you all for your help on that. But we are here today to cover another another crossover, Marvel DC mashup, if you will. The these amalgam comics, um, man, there's a lot of them. Yes, <laughs> uh, I always say this was uh, hot shotting the territory. This is late '90s when comics are really kind of struggling, and uh, everybody's doing their best. So Marvel and DC come up with this this gimmick and apparently it worked because it runs for like a year and uh, they do a couple of waves in the Marvel versus DC crossover, I think, in the middle of it. And um, this is a pretty interesting one for a lot of reasons. I mentioned Keith Giffen and John Romita Jr., two, uh, two very good Marvel DC creators. But one of the things that I wanted to talk about is this is John Romita Jr. pencils. There's no inker on this book. And this is pretty early on for going reproducing pencils at this, uh, you know, at this this style. Yeah, it's true. Uh, when we interviewed him, I, I asked the question and I tried to pose it a couple of times, but I couldn't get the guy to bite. Uh, why? Why is it pencils? And he's oh, it was challenging. But you know, was it a time thing? Like what? Like he knew that it was just going to be pencils showing. So did you have to flip this around really, really quickly? Like I, uh, we didn't get the a clear answer from him. Yeah, it's it's it's. I, I'm I'm still curious about it because at the time this wasn't really being done. It must have been somebody had an idea that this could work, and I think it works pretty well. Like this cover is pencil, so if you look close, you can kind of see the texture. You know, it might look like dry brush in some areas, but other places you can see clearly it's pencils. And one of the most interesting parts for me are the backgrounds. Like when you start to see like that Kirby crackle in the sky and everything, and you look closely, that's the side of a soft pencil that's making those uh, dark marks. Yeah, that's what that stuff is too, man. He's hitting it with that side thing. And we talked to him about that too. Like, yeah, you're a real artist because you use that side thing. And he said that he mostly like when he's doing his roughs and layouts, like he's he holds it the, the pencil like the way artists do and stuff, like a stylus rather than, you know, like you're do, trying to have nice penmanship type stance so let's I, obviously thor ryan we're uh hooking up marvel's thor with uh As dc's new gods with orion there in the title role asgard meets apocalypse yes when i started looking at this first thought i had was uh doing the eternals the john ramita jr eternals version because it is those big kirby-esque kind of uh images you know like like long shots lots of these characters the two-page spread like this is a kirby love letter yo oh, totally man uh the and probably drawn with kirby speed uh, <laughs> that's probably true and it's all like it's all in here man you don't need much you don't you don't need inks with the stuff and i'm i've been really looking at uh the chew muscle uh that the way people draw that because i left that out of my art for 20 years without thinking about it ever. So like when I see a good jowl. Yeah. I, that I feels like, note. like such a superhero piece drawing that because that is like that muscular jaw muscle. Yeah. Regular people don't walk around with this. It's a rarity that you see somebody that has that kind of a, a jawline form. But if you're doing just mus muscle superheroes, it's become very common <laughs> in Marvel DC style, uh, superhero characters and figures. Uh, giant character in the background that we're going to see more of, but pretty good depth for, uh, again, kind of doing that Kirby-esque two-page spread thing. Sells everything, man. It's it's mayhem uh, in Asgard. Yeah, and you see that, like, these panels that have 20 characters running around. That's a lot of drawing to uh, to have work out, especially, again, coming from pencils. Like, I'm sure they adjust their levels to get a pretty dark line. Sure, yeah, of course. But it's still a lot of bodies to keep track of whenever you're drawing that great fucking storyteller man and where you know we have we've we've seen this moment in a million movies and stuff like that where you see you know the, the hero shows up you got you got the the boot in the immediate foreground 
Yeah, I'm going to criticize the lettering placements here because you have this boot and a cape, right? That's all foreground element. But by putting two big white circles above the calf, you're cutting these off. Yeah. This is one big shape. And look, you have all of this room. Put your, put your word balloons up there in that black space. Have them surrounded by the black of the cape. And uh, you'd have the continuity of that foreground figure. When you're doing black in your foreground, you're already sort of chancing it because typically black recedes and light comes forward. To put those word balloons right in front, you're you're almost amputating that leg. Yeah. But it is a classic, uh, you know, having that extreme foreground character that, like, okay, you 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 busted through. Now what's going to happen? Have that, and then and then you have the reveal shot. Yeah, and looks good. Odin looks good. Uh, you know, and we're seeing again nods to Kirby, you know, I think very clear nods to Kirby. Yeah, totally. When some of that is probably kayfabe computer technique, but you can have uh, an electric eraser and get some interesting shapes like that cut in. Yeah, it makes me wonder now how, how if that's something that he drew, where you'd probably erase or some of those speed lines in the background. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of makes me wonder like what this original looks like. Mm-hmm. They did a um, a Thor release whenever he did Thor with Dan Jurgens writing, and they did a release that was pencils. Oh, uh, that's cool. Uh, and it was straight pencils, like not. I don't think there was coloring on top of it. So it was. Uh, that was one of those early examples where, like, I would see that and think, like, yeah, this guy would be great to ink. Sort of in that tradition of um, like a John Buscema, where like all the shape, all the substance that you need, the form is there, and the details would be up to the guy that's finishing it. And it does feel like. You know, you're doing these Jack Kirby nods, right? We're gonna see we're gonna see these guys strapped to the to the asteroid, uh, owed owed to the uh, new gods, and then the solid blacks. I think those are put in because the credit. Let's see, it might be at the end. The credit is like digital chameleon or somebody that's credited with color, but also gets a digital inking credit yeah and i don't think that's like i said it's just adjusting layers for or levels for a lot of this stuff to get a black line out of a gray pencil mark but whenever you see these like solid blacks i think that's probably gone over and i could see the uh the colorist being the person responsible for that you know if you're coloring and that part looks not as dark as you want blacks of color we've seen uh in in the uh, batman mad love color guides that Bruce Tim was working on. He left some X's where he's meant to ink and he just told the color separator, like make that black. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Oh, the, uh, digital chameleon inks and seps. So cleaning up that, you know, making, making sure that those uh, pencil lines are somewhat consistent value. And as I said, Giffen and Ramita Jr. on your art and uh, Thor Ryan, the hunter. So, these are so such strange books. I, I wonder, in this time period, would you come into this and be like, oh, I'm, I'm a DC reader. I want to see all the New God stuff. And then the Thor sort of like tacked on and vice versa. Just on casting, you know, like... Because wasn't there a divide, like, whenever we were reading as like, ah, I'm a Marvel zombie. Definitely. <laughs> definitely, man. And everybody recognized it as a gimmick. And I do, I mean, if I'm 12 years old or whatever reading this stuff, like I was reading it with like both eyes open of like, let, let me let me see what you guys are trying to pull here. Yeah, totally. Um, very Magneto-esque helmet. Yeah. And uh, I, I think it looks pretty cool. I'm, I'm, I'm all right with this design. I don't have any problems there. Yeah, I'll be honest, man. Like, like most of the uh, designs and stuff they put together with a lot of shit, like works just fine super soldier works for me spider boy works for me yeah we are gonna end up looking at a bunch of these <laughs> <laughs> that's something for the k fabers to fill out below is uh what's what's the next one that they need to see a little uh informal poll the like drone that. do you have them all yeah i do yeah uh dark side is amazing looking i just love this cartooning man that that bulk granite yeah, could he be any wider? The wrestler is Rhino, is who would play him. <laughs> Rhino's the widest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense how wide he is. Appropriate name. Look at this, like, you know, subdued, subservient Loki. I like these marks on the cape, too. I wonder if that's something that he's that he's trying, right? Like, I don't know exactly how pencil's going to work. Let me... Uh... 
Let me try to do something that looks cool here. I mean, he always would would do those. Like Dan Green would just ink that, you know. But they, it would always be that shape on stuff. You can really see how he builds forms on these fingers. Totally, it's so it's so three dimensional. And I, I know people criticize about it being like blocky shaped or whatever, and it's pretty blocky, but. I like the block. Would it ever work better than on a Kirby character? Yeah. You know, I mean, this feels like that hands projecting out, except we're actually getting those hands in other positions. But it feels like that same sort of sculpt. It's a, it's hard for me to accept blocky as uh, pejorative. I agree with that. Yeah, I'm a fan of that. I, I like seeing that form. And, because, and because he's doing it without many lines. Yeah, because what he's doing is he he understands the planes that that are sort of like, surrounding the character like that, that that make up the character and he understands the lighting so the part that is not you know an underplane that is away from the lighting gets the dark piece you know it's it's like math right yeah that makes a lot of sense I like this background too it reminds me a little bit of some of the mobius stuff that we would see in heavy metals and sci-fi real uh, clear line mm-hmm that's the other thing that he doesn't get so much credit for, uh, but he has a great imagination. Like, he can build weird structures and spaceships and all that kind of stuff with the best of them. Yeah, like, all of these backgrounds I like. You know, I think that's a pretty distinct setting. Doesn't this look like Invincible? It does, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and here, here's that reference I was talking about. From uh, from New Gods, from Swamp Thing, right? Isn't this a Swamp Thing? There's a piece in Swamp Thing like this. Oh yeah, where he's like grow, growing, uh, like out right. of the thing. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Cartoonist Kayfabe is brought to you by the comic books that we make. Red Room Trigger Warnings issue number one is on the stands today. In the first week of April comes Red Room Trigger Warnings issue number two. That's the pumpkins issue of Red Room, and of course last year. Uh, saw Red Room, the Antisocial Network, the idea for Red Room. It's murder on the dark web for fun and profit. Every issue is completely self-contained, and it is a gory splat fest, to say the least. Uh, the rest of the the Ed Piscor bib bibliography that is currently in print, you have three volumes of oversized X-Men Grand Design, retelling the entire story of the X-Men saga up through the origins to Days of Future Past. Four volumes of Hip Hop Family Tree documenting in a very linear fashion the history of hip hop and rap music and WYSIWYG Portrait of a Serial Hacker charting the life of a computer hacker from the earliest days of high technology up to uh, WikiLeaks. Out in stores now, Jim Ruggs, Hulk Grand Design Monster, issue one, the 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 first half of uh, the the Incredible Hulk lore out on the stands as we speak. Various flavors. The Peach Momoko is coming out soon. How's that work, Jim? April 14th. It'll be in stores everywhere. April 16th. 40, <laughs> 40 pages in issue documenting the history of the Incredible Hulk. There is a banger on every single page. Get it while it's hot. This thing is not going to be in the stores for long. And uh, before you know it, comes Hulk Grand Design uh, madness with uh, some very cool variant covers uh, by Ed McGinnis and Jeff Darrow to kind of goose those uh, bookshelves in your local comic shops. And the rest of the Jim Rugg bibliography in stores now, Plain Janes with Cecil Castellucci, and uh, rapidly going out of print soon. If you see it in your comic shops, get your hands on it right away, man, because we don't know when this is going to be back in print. Street Angel, Deadliest Girl Alive. Get these numbers up high on those Amazon charts. We love seeing it. We thank you so much. We appreciate your patronage. And now that we're done paying the bills, let's get back to the video. I look at that Kirby Crackle and, and him making this, these marks in pencil. Um, Kirby Crackle is deceptively hard. It is, yeah. Because like, you got the guys who are just too um, anal retentive about it, and it just looks, it, it, it looks wrong. It's hard to ink like good round objects. Like even with a brush, I have trouble with that at a certain size. There's a Jim Starlin, George Perez version that is like more dots means better or yeah. something. <laughs> Smaller dots. I don't disagree with that. Tell me, tell me, uh, tell the people out in cave land who might not necessarily draw. 
How tough of a view of a human figure is that uh, to draw, Jimmy? It's impossible. Yeah, it's impossible. This is this is that yoga stuff of like uh, whatever that laying flat prone pose is and people have trouble just laying flat. Try drawing bodies laying down and being, in this case, wrapped around an, an asteroid or something. And I didn't even notice this figure before, but to give you a sense of scale, this itty bitty tiny little figure standing on top of that. And uh, man, this could be Hellboy's dad, by the way, what he's standing on. Totally. It's cool. Reminds me of like, uh, you know, like an H.P. Lovecraft kind of idea of these these dark old gods. And again, I think this black is beefed up. Yeah, sure. Because yeah, you can kind of see is. like a solid black on a, on a leg in pencil. It's just not solid because it's pencil. And communicating light, like just in pencil, right? Like, let's not look at the color, but like just a light. So if you have a character with like lots of black, you don't have much black on this character it it, it, it means he's illuminated more kayfabe leg muscles yes <laughs> totally <laughs> <laughs> yeah those are kind of skinny, skinny ankles on there these gimmicks man speaking of kayfabe legs like where are the feet oh that's that's that, that's old school mignola man <laughs> it's sweet and they've combined it's uh mother cube is, is their uh their gimmick throughout this one genius yep combining all of it how jarring are the ads? PlayStation, like like PlayStation uh, games, like this polygon stuff, mm -hmm. it doesn't age the way pixels do. Like like Super Mario Brothers ages better than this kind of stuff or Tomb Raider or something. I don't know what that is. It's it's just primitive, right? I mean, that's the ultimately the the issue, right? You, you, I mean, the, these polygons are. You know, you have so few of them compared to now. Like, it's an exponential number of polygons. Yeah, that's true. And and this was just a window. Like, mm -hmm. like, like pixels stuck around for about a decade or something. And these, this was just like a window of like, say, like ninety six to two thousand or something. Right. Pro probably less really. It just became so disruptive with the ads whenever the comics move towards digital coloring, and then your ads look like this, and it's, it's, it's so jarring. Yeah. You know, it's very different than whenever you had all your little tiny postage stamp size, like build muscles, learn learn karate, X ray specs, bad bad uh, bad printing and reproduction. <laughs> I love that they even have uh, Portman two uh, kayfabe names for for DC Marvel. Yeah, that's fake funny. editors and shit. That's very funny. Uh, pretty interesting stuff, I think, color wise. Yeah, you know, it's a big. We often t comment on like whenever scenes shift and you get like a different color palette or something, it really stands out. Like this looks different than our previous pages. I've never, uh, you know, I don't really work work with anybody, but I just don't know. I, I mean, I guess you have to just concede if you're just on an assembly line. Yes, but like having somebody else like fuck with my pencils or inks or something, that would be that would be an adjustment. It surprises me how much. Um, Especially now, I feel like artists really labor over their drawings, and then they just hand it off to people. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, cut Thor's leg off with your word balloon placement. Right. You know, um, I, I do seen, something dramatic with these colors that changes the way my drawing looks underneath. i seen, uh, if you go on Art Adams' uh, Instagram, like, he, he shows process stuff. Whenever a new cover comes out, he'll show <laughs> the process stuff. And there's this uh, Spider-Man cover falling down from this building... And the building's behind them, and it's Art Adams, so he's drawn every brick and every every window pane, and, and the windows all look functional and stuff. And the colorist went in, like, changed all the line art, and then added a blur. So, like, it's completely invisible. Like, all the labor he put into it is completely invisible. He wasn't talking shit or anything. It's just my own observation, but I'm like, fuck, dude. Like, that that dude put a lot of work in. It's invisible now. Yeah. Did he did he acknowledge it? I mean, yeah, I wonder said, if that's he something he like directs. He, he said he was fine with it. Yeah. But yeah, this, it's it's interesting. Like I I that was one of those weird takeaways when we did the Bruce Tim color guides, yeah. where it's like you are translating from these like blended colors onto like a digital translation. Like it's it's very complicated. Yeah. <laughs> getting this stuff in. I was looking at this and I love the reflection of the hammer because again, this is where you go. Oh, it's pencil. You know, like you're quickly putting these pencil lines in calls to mind like some of Tom Scioli's work, mm -hmm. which I really, I like that, you know, like it reads, it's a reflection, no problem at all, but it also is don't overthink it, you know, like put the side of your pencil down there and, and do some quick reflection. This is storytelling, you know, if you do the greatest reflection and draw the thing two times and one of them is like a different line, it doesn't make the comic any better. 
this is a fun epilogue because like ultimately Thor has, uh, you know, Thor Ryan, I should say, has sacrificed himself. And he really is more Thor than uh, Orion, huh? <laughs> sure. <laughs> he got the, he got the, the start of the name. That's the important part, right? <laughs> um, but he comes back or he's reincarnated or lives on as this celestial. And uh, the celestial is like, I get to this point and I go, oh, it's not the DC Marvel anymore. This is just Kirby. Yeah. We're just doing this Kirby love letter. And they got the guys for the job. Gotta man. love that. Yeah, absolutely. Two yeah. guys with, with huge Kirby influences in their work. And it feels like you get to this point and it's it's a love letter to uh to, to Kirby. Yeah. Great piece. And and specifically to his like cosmic storytelling. So pretty cool one. This is this is probably my my favorite of these uh of these comics. They even combine the letter names. Like Olaf Sperling instead of uh is it Olaf Beamer, I think, is one of those constant I believe I have a an, uh, one of his letters in the uh upcoming Hulk, Hulk collection. <laughs> so, See but, uh, that's that's how you know it's like old school nerdy editors put this together because they they got the fucking letter hacks names. Mel- Melissa DeBleek Jr., I think is Augie DeBleek Jr. <laughs> Who was like I know him as like an online reviewer. Uh, still active. I think I might follow him on Twitter or something, but it, it is funny to see like really inside jokes for all the, the dismissive hot shotting comments I make about this stuff. Somebody was really trying. They, I mean, they got people with chops to make these fucking That's things, true. you know, like, because you knew like they're all number ones. They, they all sold well. They had newsstand distribution. So those numbers were beefed up with, with those kinds of sales also. Yeah, I put my collection together from from dollar boxes, which is your indicator of how it's sold. Yeah. Because the stuff that doesn't sell, if it's something that has a life, you know, beyond initial release, you just don't find them in dollar boxes. Right. So, yeah, it it, it must have sold it sold well enough for them to run with it for a year and to do a second kind of round with them. Um and hey, comics are still here, so maybe mission accomplished. <laughs> <laughs> I always inject a little bit of life, man. Just keep this uh, thing in triage. It's it's it is interesting. Like this down periods, like what happened here? How did we get? How did we keep it going at this point when everything seemed to be bottoming out? And uh, probably the bigger seller from that time period. You know, one of the big the big wins. The amalgams, yes. not the not the Ryan specific. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This whole line, this whole concept. Yeah, very uh, well remembered, and people have a great fondness for them. And you go to the comic convention, you will see Bat Blade or whatever the fuck <laughs> that character's name is. That's funny. Bat Reen. <laughs> Wolvie Bat, whatever he's called, man. You good to go? Yeah, I am. I, th- I think none of those names are right. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely not. Cave Evers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell, we'll notify you when new vids are available. It's after Jimmy. I can't stop thinking Wolvie Bat. <laughs> there should be bootleg comics like that. Speaking of comics, Hulk Grand Design Monster number one. That's what I have out in stores right now while supplies last. Pick that up at your local comic book shop and tell them that you want a copy of Hulk Grand Design Madness which will be coming out late in April. And uh, please join me on patreon.com slash Jim Rugg. Red Room Trigger Warnings, issue number one and two on the stands as we speak. Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the name of the game in the Red Room universe, and every single issue is completely self-contained. So if you see an issue, scoop it up. Uh, If you uh, are falling behind, you didn't get last year's comics, Red Room, the anti-social network trade paperback is in stores, and you can get your hands on that to get uh, your, your introduction into the Red Room universe. Or right now, at this very moment, go to my Patreon, patreon.com slash edpiscor. For three bucks, you can uh, check out the archive of Red Room Comics, more than 200 pages worth of stuff. I put new strips up on Tuesdays. And like I said, it's three bucks. You can get to these links in my link tree in the description below this video. Jimmy, what else do we have out there? Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. It's another great way to support the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel. Keep this thing going. Give them those margin orders, Jim. We'll be on our way. Read more comics.